Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you so very much for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And as you know, over the past two days, and this is day number three, we have been in a series about understanding the pressure. We talked about the pressure of stress. Today, we're going to talk about the pressure of intimidation. That's right, the pressure of intimidation. And as we mentioned, pressure is nothing you could actually see. Pressure is something that is actually felt. But before we go any further, I want to share with you our morning inspirations. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Romans 8, 21 through 39. The enemy is constantly trying to find ways to hold and keep you down. But through Jesus Christ, you continue to rise. Reference scripture Isaiah 59, 16 through 21, be blessed on purpose because you are. I want to remind you that on tomorrow at 12 o'clock noon, we will have virtual Bible study via the Facebook page for The Balance of Life, as well as hosting here via our radio program. Be sure to tune in as we begin to continue, and I always say begin because the Holy Spirit is going to shift us and what we're going to share. As a matter of fact, on tomorrow, we are going to go into more detail about understanding the pressure, and we're also going to share some other things with you. Uh, so excited. I don't want to give too much away. Be sure to turn tune in 12 o'clock noon tomorrow right here with the balance of life. All right, so when we are talking about understanding the pressure, the pressure of intimidation, what does intimidation come to do? A lot of times, intimidation is sent to get someone to stop doing a certain thing. And we know that the enemy's prime job is to do what? To steal, kill, and to destroy. So he will bring in a spirit of intimidation when you are beginning to really put your purpose, goals, and dreams to work. He will bring in intimidating factors as he did in the instance of Nehemiah, trying to intimidate him with scare tactics, with fear tactics, with uh, tactics of doubt, uh, with the leader as well as the individuals who are sent to assist the leader with purpose, goals, and dreams. That is pressure of intimidation. That pressure could come in. We've talked about finances. We've talked about, uh, let's talk about unity. So the pressure that the enemy will bring in is division. That's right. Or a falsehood of unity. That is the spirit of sabotage. Where Nehemiah did experience that, as did also Ezra in his writing how there was a a falsehood of pretending that individuals wanted to be a part of the work of rebuilding of the wall and of the house of the Lord. They pretended when in fact their motive was to get in in the inside and to discourage the people who decided to get to work for the Lord. So that is a spirit of sabotage that comes from 
intimidation, intimidating factors to try and stop you from even getting started. So along the way, as soon as you feel, as soon as you know that God is instructing you to do a work, you begin to pray about it and things begin to shake up and you're writing the vision, making it plain. That Making it plain simply means to get an understanding of clarity. So there you are. You are writing the vision. You see what God has called you to do. You're getting things lined up and ironed out. And here comes the enemy. And remember, the weapons of our warfare are carnal. Are not carnal but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So what does that mean? It means that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is not a physical thing. It's a spiritual opposition to the will of God. And the enemy, who is the enemy, otherwise known as Satan himself, does not want the will or work or of God to come to pass. And so he will send things to try to block and to hinder, to sabotage, to discourage those who have set themselves in a place of being obedient to do the will and work of God. He will fight against you. He will uh, try to hold up your finances. So the finances are tools for what God has you to do. We can have our plans. We know what we want to do. We begin to look up, actually long before we look up pricing, we just know the plans, we know what we want to do, we have an idea of cost, and here comes the enemy to try and sabotage the first thing, finances. If he can touch the finances, he will discourage you to try to keep you from moving forward. Why? Because the first thing that is going to come to the mind of the individual is, I don't have the finances to do this, so why continue in the planning stages? That is the pressure of intimidation. Intimidating you through your finances which also is stressful. Another way besides our finances of holding them up is the team to work with. You can give the idea to the team. Everyone seems to be on board, okay? And then it seems you're working alone. What happened to the enthusiasm? What happened to the ideas? What happened to the, ah, uh, yes, that's a good idea. What happened to all of those phrases? We all have to pray and ask who it is we are supposed to work with, who is supposed to be a part of this God-sized assignment that you have been invited to. And we have to pray for everyone involved. Here's where we fall short. Sometimes I believe that we're so focused on the plans of the events and the organizations and, and the new businesses. We're focused on that and we're not covering one another in prayer. We're not praying for the minds and the hearts of the individuals that are connected. We're not praying to keep them covered, to keep them focused for what they have been invited to. And therefore, they are exposed. They, they don't have a covering because all of our prayers are generated towards the outcome of what God called us to do. But in fact, we should cover those worker bees, those idealists, those project managers, whatever title, whatever um, position that they have and what you have invited them to do. Hopefully by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Keep them covered and in prayer so that the spirit of unity may remain. 
If you're just tuning in, you are tuning in to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you so very much for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So excited about this day. I have been purposely uh, in the morning when I get up and I'm laying there in my time of meditation and I'm praying about my day. And I pray and I thank God for supplying all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Well, normally, when we pray that prayer, we are thinking about the materialistic things. Food, clothing, and shelter, and the finances that we need for that day. But I find that I have been missing the most important component. When I thank him for supplying my needs for the day. And the components are, my needs for today are wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. A revelation of the knowledge of Christ. An increase of the hunger and thirst after the knowledge of Christ. Those are what I need for today. I need to be replenished. I need to be restored. I need to be refilled. I need a revival to hit my spirit. I need my mind to be renewed. And so it's been a few days. And that component has been included in my thanks. Of what he has supplied for me today. I need those things just for today alone. That which I had for yesterday, I used yesterday. I used everything that I needed for yesterday. This is a new day. I need it all over again. I need my spiritual eyes open. I need my ears open. So that I am attentive to the voice of the Lord by the move of the Holy Spirit and that I can catch the warnings that he sends me of the pending attack from the enemy. Remember, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal and we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And I thank him for leading and guiding me in that area as we have been talking about understanding the pressure. Understand the pressure. Those intimidating factors that want to stop and hinder us from doing what God called us to do. Yes, you have been found worthy. You have studied to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes, God has found you to be a vessel of honor that he can trust to do his will in this particular assignment. Whatever that assignment is that you have been invited to, it is because God saw you as a willing and submissive will. He saw you as a vessel, an obedient vessel, a vessel of faith, a a vessel that is faithful. He saw you as that. And so he extended an invitation to you. For an assignment. And as long as we do as the children of Israel were instructed to keep our focus and our mind on the Holy Spirit, follow. Follow the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead us and guide us, He's going to direct us into all truth. Whatever it is that we need, God will supply it. It is there for us. And 
as you are at work. Another thing that comes to intimidate is when we take our eyes off of God. That's another thing that comes to intimidate. When we take our eyes off of God and we are literally looking everywhere else. We are looking at how others are doing things and, and how God is using them and we're looking at their outcome and we're looking at their numbers and we're looking at all of those things except for following the flow, the guidance, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. That is intimidation. That's also self-sabotage. You're self-sabotaging yourself. Because instead of doing things the way that God called us to do it, we have our eyes focused on others. And we want to do it the way they do it because it looked good over there and they had a wonderful outcome. That is self-sabotage. Because those aren't your plans. Those aren't your instructions. That is not your direction. What is God calling you to do? How is he calling you to do it? That is self-intimidation. Because we sometimes try to compete with what we see others doing. And when and, and listen, we don't know. We don't know behind the scenes stuff. All we see is the outcome. And then we become frustrated because it don't look like theirs did. Well, we don't know what happened in the background. We don't know anything about the midnight oil. We don't know anything about the midnight cry. We have no idea about the tape and the stitches that is holding up what our visible eyes can see. We have no idea about that. So keep your eyes focused on what God has called you to do for the assignment that he invited you to do. That is, don't fall into being self-sabotaged. Don't fall into um, competing with anybody else. You are a chosen vessel. You are a royal priesthood. You are of a holy nation. And what you have been invited to do, yes, others can, they have a, they have a call. They have instructions from the Lord. But they're going to move and do it the way that God called them to do. Another thing of intimidation is opinions of others. That's intimidating. Because you have your instructions. You have your directions. But then you have individuals coming to say, why don't you do it this way? And why don't you do it that way? And then they bring in their ideals and they bring in what others are doing which brings in more comparison and competition. Trying to get you to live up to the standards of what others have done. That is pressure of intimidation. It is, this is why we must understand Habakkuk in writing the vision and making it plain. This is bringing in the components of Proverbs, the fifth chapter. Trusting in the Lord with all our heart, leaning not to our own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. If we would line up that scripture text with Habakkuk, the second chapter, talking about the vision, talking about writing it. But the, before we write it, Habakkuk says that I will stand upon my watch and I will wait to see what he will say to me. And when I am reproved, 
when I am corrected. Then I can go into the process of writing a vision. Because now I have clarity and now I have an understanding. So when the spirit of intimidation comes in, I am not intimidated by any means necessary because I have a clear understanding of what he has said unto me. I can look across the room and I can admire and acknowledge and praise and give accolades to others who are doing things similar to me because I have an understanding of what he called me to. When we get a clear understanding that we are not in competition with anybody. Because we should have the common goal. Which is the kingdom of heaven. There should be no competition. There should be an accessory prayer. Praying you one for another that we may be healed. That's what it should be. So whatever pressure that you are facing, understand that pressure. What is this pressure all about? If you recall, we, we did mention that there are several types of pressure. There is that pressure to get you to your destiny. I hear some people say they like to work under pressure. I don't like to work under pressure like that. I like to get things done a little bit at a time for the overall outcome. So I will do portions at a time, but never the whole project at one time. So we experience different types of pressure. Our job is to say, understand the pressure. Understand the pressure that you're facing. What is that pressure sent to do? Is it a pressure to get you into the right place? Or is it a pressure to sabotage you, to try and get you to stop. And if it's something that's trying to get you to stop, why? Why do you want me to stop? Who don't you want me to reach? What word are you trying to stop me from delivering, from sharing? What prayer do you not want me to go into? Why? What, 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 what's the pressure about? What seed do you not want me to sow? What place are you trying to hinder and stop me from getting to? What is this pressure all about? Oh, there is the pressure of jealousy. A jealous spirit. Mm-hmm. There is that type of pressure. That type of pressure will come and undermine everything that you do. Try to belittle what you do. But as long as you know that you know that you know that what you are doing is for the kingdom of heaven and this is what you have been called to do, nothing or no one can undermine what you do. Do it in the spirit of excellence, all to the glory of God. And let me say this, if you are following the instructions given unto you to do what it is that you have been called to do, it is in the spirit of excellence. Doing it unto the glory of God. Let no man deceive you. Let no man cause you to compromise what God has called you to do. Understand the pressure. Understand it. When that spirit of jealousy is at work, that spirit also works with the spirit of sabotage. 
which will try to get you to derail your instructions. That spirit will try to get you to um, deviate, derail, abandon your instructions given to you by God onto another path not meant for you just to see it fail just to see it crumble just to nitpick it apart see we, we have to understand the pressure we have to understand why we go through what we go through isn't that something that's absolutely ridiculous for someone to give you instructions on how to do something and when you do it they are the first ones to criticize it and nitpick it apart that is a spirit of sabotage that is a jealous spirit scripture tells us to know those who labor among you know them know who labors among you know who is really and truly in favor with what God has called you to do they are with you they, they want to see it come to pass they are encouraging you they are praying for you and there's no hidden agenda I pray for you with no hidden agenda. I don't want anything personally from you except to see that the will of God is done in your life. That's all I want. I want to see the glory of God operating in your life. I want to see the kingdom of heaven on earth. I want to see the work and will of God operate through you. That's it. That's it. So in these three days, understand the pressure that you're facing. Ask questions. It is okay to ask questions. It is okay to get an understanding. We are instructed to. We are encouraged to do so. We are commanded by God. He tells us that. He tells us. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. He says, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He also commands us, encourages us, instructs us to ask, to seek, and to knock. And as you do that, what you're seeking for, you will find. What you're asking for, there is an answer. And as you are knocking, there will be an opening for a revelation. But we must ask the right questions. What is this pressure all about? What is going on in the atmosphere around me? Ask for spiritual eyes. Ask for the spirit of discernment. If you talk too much, ask him to help you keep your mouth closed. Sometimes we talk too much and we're not talking to the right people. Or sometimes we're just saying stuff out in the atmosphere and it's not meant to be sent out in the atmosphere. And when we do, there is that spiritual, demonic spirit to carry away what you have said. I believe I mentioned a couple of months ago, we give the enemy the tools to fight against us. We do. Because we got we, we talk too much. We, we're not moving according to the Holy Spirit. And when we don't move according to the Holy Spirit, we give the enemy tools to use against us. So understand the pressure that you're in. Be sure to join us tomorrow for 12 o'clock midday Bible study right here at the Balance of Life via our Facebook page for the Balance of Life as well as our radio broadcast program 
Looking forward to sharing that time with you on tomorrow. Be blessed on purpose because you absolutely are. Have a good day.